This pen first went into production in 1966 and has had very few changes ever since. And there's a reason for that. It's very well designed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the pieces of the pen, talk about them a little bit. I'm going to do some ratings out of five. I'm going to rate the design, the comfort, and the writing experience. Then I'm going to do a writing sample, and then we'll be done. Okay, now for the parts of the pen. Let's start with the cap. So the cap tapers to the uh, tip. It is a uh, has a shiny top. There's a slight indent here, and it has a brushed aluminum clip. And this clip is really clever because, as you can see there, it's spring loaded. Press back here, pops open. This clip really works. Clips to a shirt. The little hook there really grabs on. The cap and the barrel are made of a material called macrolon which is a fiberglass resin i believe it was invented by lamy for this pen now this pen was designed in the bauhaus style and i'm not going to talk very much about it because i'm not a design expert um google's your friend it's really interesting but the whole concept is uh, form follows function so figure out what you want to do first and then design for that which is what the concept was for this pen so anyways, the barrel tapers down to the end. There's an end cap. This is a piston filler. You'll see that in the writing sample when I ink it up. And that means this holds a lot of ink. End of end cap has a white dot. I'm not sure why it's white. The whole re There's not really any white in the rest of the pen. But I actually kind of like that little feature. There's an ink window, which is great, because like I said, a piston filler if it is if you have a piston filler the only way to know if you still have ink is if there's an ink window otherwise you write it dry and then you find out then these little white dots you see here are actually little tabs of metal tabs that the cap clicks to and it clicks on securely it can also be posted and it's actually not an uncomfortable pen to use posted but i personally prefer it unposted these tabs you feel when you're writing um, not in a super unpleasant way, but you're definitely aware that they exist. The section is a brushed aluminum again, and it is um, matching the clip. There's a little ink window, ink uh, filling hole there, and it's a hooded nib, which is actually clever because if you have a hooded nib, it means that it keeps the ink on the nib dry, uh, wet, so it doesn't dry out, so you can leave it uncap for longer, pick it up, write, and there should be no hard starts. The nib is gold, I believe it's 14 karat. I can't see right now because it's covered up by the hoodedness of the nib. Very smooth, nice to write with. This one, this one here is a medium nib. And those are the parts of the pen. On to the ratings. For design, I give this pen a 5 out of 5. You just can't beat it. They went in with the concept, form follows function, and they followed it through. It's got a beautiful um, Zeppelin-like design. It looks futuristic. And it looks futuristic today, in 2014. Can you imagine, in 1966, this must have blown people's minds. It is just so well thought out every step of the way. For comfort, I give it a 4. It is not unpleasant. It fits nicely in my hand. These little tabs that hold on the uh, cap, however, you can feel them when you're holding it. Doesn't dig in, but you're aware that they're there. Also, the sweet spot on the nib can be a little bit hard to find. You put it down, and you're not necessarily at the perfect spot for writing. You kind of have to play with it a little bit. Other than that, 4 to 5 really nice. Writing experience, I give it a 4.5 out of 5. Really nice to write with. It's got the gold nib, no hard starts, flows nicely. It sings a bit when you write, so it's got a bit of uh, feedback, but not in a bad way. You just know you're writing with it. It is still super smooth. So I guess a 4.5. Average those out. 4.5 total. And yeah, you get a really nice pen. Now for some measurements, capped is 138 millimeters, 
uncapped 125 millimeters, posted 156 millimeters, and the weight is 11 grams. Okay, we're gonna do the writing sample now, and then we're done. Okay, so this is the Lamy 2000. I think his J. Herbin. Clear. Clear Savage. Let's try some writing. Once upon a time, someone said form should follow function and flow. The Lamy 2000 was born. So as you can see, no false starts, wrote really smoothly. This is a nice art. This is a medium nib. Um, nice medium line, uh, no skips, really smooth. I'm not sure if the um, mic is picking it up, but this pen sings a bit. Once you're ready, it uh, gives you a little bit of feedback, not unpleasant, not scratchy, but you can feel a little bit and you can hear it. Also, has a bit of a sweet spot. It'll write in a bunch of different places, but only one is really the nice smooth one. So let's try writing quickly. No skips, just really nicely falling it up. Now, ink flow. Let's give it a couple seconds. Da, 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 da. Very wet. You write something. It's wet. And actually, I like that. I would rather have a nice, thick, wet line that takes a couple seconds to dry and you just have to take some care. So that's nice. Um, line variation. So that is without any um, pushing on it. And there is some, which is not surprising because of the gold nib. But here's no pressure, a little bit of pressure, some pressure, lots of pressure, max pressure, and down. So you can see there is some variation that to be had. This is not a flex nib. So what do I think? pretty darn good pen and I really think it is really nice to write with pretty comfortable to hold <laughs> nice to doodle with yeah that's nice so I think that is everything. Oh, can you write in the reverse? You can, but it's unpleasantly scratchy. So.
Thanks for watching. And goodbye.